I'd like to say hello to everyone. I'd like to welcome you to Restoration Christian Fellowship Church uh, Bible Study on March 8th, 2022, 23. I bring you greetings on behalf of our senior pastor, Imogene Ingram, the Restoration Christian Fellowship Church family. Uh, we truly thank you for joining the broadcast on tonight. Uh, we continue in our study in the book of um, uh, Ephesians chapter 2, verses 16 and 17 on tonight. Ephesians chapter 2, uh, verses 16 and 17 on tonight. Uh, we're studying studying in the life of the Christian believer. Uh, we're down to point D, where it says, remember what life is like since Christ came in. And point four, it should be reconciliation, Jesus Christ and the cross. That's where we're going to pick up on tonight. Uh, point four under D, uh, remember uh, what life is. Uh, what life, what life is like since Christ has come in, and point four, reconciliation, Jesus Christ and a cross. That's where we're going to pick up on tonight. Um, I wanted to start this way on tonight, um, since this is National Women's Day. I just want to give a shout out to all the women uh, that are doing big things, both in our families, our churches, our um, communities, our workplaces, uh, wherever they may be in their um, part of life. We just want to give a quick shout out to all the women. Um, they are doing great things, and a very um, and our very own pastor uh, give a shout out to her at 85 years old, still um, pushing and uh, uh, leading our church as our pastor. So we thank God for her as well. Uh, mm -hmm. Definitely a trailblazer for the kingdom of God. Amen. So I just wanted to start with um, Esther chapter four on tonight. I love this scripture. I love the whole uh, story of Esther, but I like this part because this is a part where we find ourselves in Esther chapter four verse 14, and this is where Esther is um, is uh, going to find out what God has placed her in the kingdom for, amen, and how many know it's such a blessing to find out uh, the will of God for your life, amen, and what God wants you to do, and he uh, makes it vivid and makes it um, understandable for you that you can understand that it is God pushing you to do something, but we know um, in this story we find the Jews were um, getting ready to be um, murdered, and wiped off the face of the earth, but God had a plan in place where he had already sent, amen, uh, Esther into the, uh, the king's palace, um, and she would be able to find favor with the king, amen, and be able to spare the Jews because she was able to go before him and win their pardon from their uh, this situation of um, uh, this cruel um, plan to wipe them out, wipe, wipe them off the face of the earth. But in Esther chapter 4, verse 14, I love this, it says, and I'm reading from the New Living Translation. It says, if you keep quiet at a time like this, deliverance and relief for the Jews will arise from some other place. But you and your relatives will die. Who knows if perhaps you were made queen for just such a time as this? And that's the part I always loved was this. Who knows if perhaps you were made queen for just such a time as this? And I just wanted to say, once again, as we're recognizing Women's Day, there's a lot of women that are doing great things, once again, for the, for the kingdom of God, for their families, for their workplaces, wherever it may be. In this story, we see that Esther actually takes charge when Mordecai, her uncle, tells her the plan of them wiping the Jews out. But I love the fact that in verse 15 and 16, now she sends a message to um, Mordecai and tells him, this is what I need you guys to do. I need you guys to fast and I need you guys to pray. And on the third day, and I love this, on the third day, I'm going to go into the king and 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 uh, ask for your pardon, to ask for our freedom. And that's what happened. Amen. She she put a plan in place that that showed her leadership qualities, that showed her 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 love, her caring, and she took advantage of the position that she had where she was in the king's palace for such a time as this. And I just want to say to all the women and all to the men that are on tonight and that will view this in the future. We end the earth as for such a time as this. We know the violence. We know the um, the families um, make up. Everything is changing within our communities and within our families and within our churches. But God has saw fit for us to be in place for such a time as this. So I encourage all of us, let's be like Esther. Let's go before God and ask God for the plans for our life. Ask God for the directions for our lives that we can be used at a greater level during these evil times that we live in today. And it's such a blessing, once again, to be able to, as she said, ask the men and women of other um, of her race to pray, 
And on the third day, she went in once again, and she won their pardon. And the guy that was conspiring to kill all the Jews ended up setting a plan for himself, and he ended up hanging from the gallows that he was setting up to hang the Jews with. So how many know that evil does not work when God is in control? And God will put people in place to help us um, be able to survive the evil that, that is existing, and not only in our world, amen, but in different nations around the world, different countries around the world that are facing the same turmoil, the same uh, structure, the same um, issues that we're facing. God can put you in a place for such a time as this. Amen. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we come before you tonight thanking you once again for this great day um, that we're living in today. We thank you, oh God, for um, your plan for um, for our lives. We thank you for um, bringing us salvation. We thank you for making a way for us to um, be able to face each and every day because of your son, Jesus Christ. And because he lives on the inside of us, we can face tomorrow. So God, we thank you on tonight for our Bible study. Once again, we thank you for the story of Esther. Amen. How um, for such a time as that, you put her in place to save much people alive. And once again, we thank you for all the women on National Women's Day, oh God, that are in position to do great things for you, oh God, whether it's in our families, whether it's in our churches, our communities, our workplaces, or wherever it may be. Um, God, we thank you for all those women. We thank you for the mothers, the grandmothers, oh God, the aunts, oh God, uh, those that are married, those that are single, oh God, that are doing great things for the kingdom of God. And we thank God for all those women, amen, that have taken on the responsibility of helping other children, helping other mothers, or helping other fathers raise other uh, children, oh God, where they have vital input into their lives. So we just thank you for all the women. We thank you for all the men as well. Um, we just want to be in the position to be used for you like Esther was. Uh, we want to be um, used at such a time as this. Uh, we pray against all the evil, the violence that is that's escalating, um, not just in Philadelphia, but as I was watching the news the other morning, it just hurt my heart to see young teenagers um, uh, uh, running people off, running people down on the streets of Philadelphia, Washington, D.C., and Chicago, and all these different places where they're uh, killing and uh, shooting, murdering, I mean, on, on septa buses, on uh, subways, and other, uh, other cities as well. So we just lift up our young people to you on today, and we pray for their future, oh God. Their future is not tied up in the streets, is not tied up Amen. And what the world wants to portray that um, they 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 going to go to jail or they going to end up drug addicts or alcoholics or um, in um, prostitution or whatever it may be. They don't have to have that story. Uh, remember a, a rapper um, named The Truth, a Christian rapper. He wrote a story of uh, wrote a song and it was called My Story. And and in that song he was saying, My story does not have to end or have to be that I was a drug addict or that I was a, a um, a person of the street, um, I, I was shot, I was murdered, or I murdered, or whatever it may be, but his story was that how about my story be that I was a kingdom young person, that I was a kingdom uh, young boy, a kingdom young girl, and I did the things responsible enough for me to live, let that be my story, where God showed me favor, and God be alive, oh God. So I just pray that our young people will find the kingdom of God like never before. God, send men and women, amen, that are capable and able to share the things of God with them and help them in their journey um, that they're facing each and every day. So we pray for our young people, cover them, their minds, their hearts with the blood of Jesus, and we just pray for their future. Uh, once again, their future does not have to be um, uh, Gone before their time, uh, uh, shot, killed, murdered before their time, that they can live out their life and live out their life the way God planned it to be all along. And God, we once again, we thank you uh, for our pastor. We uh, thank you for her longevity. We thank you for her um, willingness to continue serving the kingdom of God. We pray for her strength, her encouragement on tonight. And God, we pray for the members of Restoration. We pray against any sickness or any disease. Amen. We pray for the health of our church. We pray for our families. Amen. We pray for our finances. And we pray for a will to, to work in your kingdom. Amen. And, and, and let us not grow weary in well-doing, oh God, because in due season, we will reap if we faint not, God. The enemy wants us to um, get weary, amen, in what we're doing for the kingdom, oh God. Let us give us the strength and the fortitude to continue doing what you have called us to do in the kingdom, God. Let us not get worried. Let us keep working. Let us keep pushing forward. And let us know that whatever we're doing for the kingdom, 
Uh, amen. It will last. Amen. Um, it will go forward in the kingdom of heaven because we're doing it for God and his glory and not for man. So God, once again, we thank you for our Bible study. We ask you to be in the midst of our class on tonight. I decrease that you may increase as we continue talking about reconciliation on tonight. We pray that your, um, your Holy Spirit will be in the class on tonight. And just have your way in the class on tonight. Um, let us all, amen, just be an encouragement to each other. And as we get thoughts or uh, questions, oh God, let those thoughts and questions uh, be asked. And um, we pray that you will get the answers to whatever it may be um, in the name of Jesus Christ. We thank you for this class. And we thank you for your Holy Spirit going through this technology and touching each one of us and wherever we may be. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen and amen. Amen. Once again, I thank you for joining the class on tonight. Uh, we're continuing where Deacon Kevin left off last week. He left off at um, uh, the life of the Christian believer, uh, remembering what life is like uh, since Christ came in. It was point D, and um, he uh, left off at point four, and that's where, where I will pick up tonight, uh, point four, which is reconciliation. Uh, reconciliation, Jesus Christ in the cross. And uh, before we get started at this, I just will read uh, um, Ephesians 2, verses 16 and 17. That's the two verses that we're honing in on tonight, verses uh, 16 and 17. And actually, I like the way 15 reads as well. And I started verse 15, um, and I'm reading from the New Living Translation. Uh, he did this by ending the system of the of law with its uh, commandments and regulations. He made peace between Jews and Gentiles by creating in himself one new people from the two groups. Together as one body, Christ reconciled both groups to God by means of his death on the cross and our hostility toward, toward each other was put to death. Amen. He brought this good news of peace to you Gentiles who were far away from him and peace to the Jews who were near. Glory to God. So that's where we're going to pick up on tonight. Once again, I'd like to welcome everyone to the class on tonight. Uh, see pastor is on. Thank you uh, for uh, <laughs> joining on tonight. I've seen your pastor and all the other members and visitors that are on tonight. Uh, we thank you for joining. Um, as stated, we, we're talking about reconciliation on tonight. And before we get to reconciliation, the last part uh, where Deacon Kevin left off last week, uh, it was talking about creating the new man and us coming together, being together, working together, and loving each other um, last week. And um, the last week I caught the end because I was at, actually at work. Um, and I caught the end and I caught the prayer and the prayer was awesome. And how many know that prayer changes things, amen? And yes. prayer is, is necessary and unity and prayer is awesome. So I, I put the end of that. Um, so point four reads on tonight. Uh, Christ brings peace by creating a new man. Uh, God planned and promised a new creation, the creation of a new man individually and corporately, a new man in whom Jesus Christ dwells. And that uh, can be found in Colossians 1.27, and that reads uh, Colossians 1.27. It reads, uh, for God wanted them to know the riches and glory of Christ are for the Gentiles. I'm sorry, for you Gentiles too. And this is the secret. Christ lives in you. This gives you assurance of sharing his glory. And once again, for God wanted them to know the riches and glory of Christ. And that riches and glory of Christ are for you, the Gentiles, as well. And this is the secret. Christ lives in you. This gives you assurance of sharing his glory. So we see here Christ's glory was not just only in the Jews, amen, but we're going to find out it was in the Gentiles as well, amen. And he wanted, he came for each individual, uh, for in every race of people. He also came, amen, for the Gentiles, the Jews, the black, the white, short, tall. He came for all people amen and when you accept his son once again you become a new creation and now christ dwells on the inside of each and every one of us no matter if you jew or you are gentile uh individuals uh when a man trusts to christ 
uh, Christ causes the man to be born again. He recreates, he recreates the man, creates the man all over again. A man has a new life. Uh, he begins life all over again. Amen. He has a new beginning. In this new, uh, in this new beginning, brings peace. Amen. Peace of heart and mind. Um, and we, that can be found in Ephesians 2 and 10, uh, where it tells us um, about uh, Christ's peace. Uh, Ephesians 2 and 10, uh, we covered that a few weeks back, and that reads, uh, for we are God's masterpiece. He has created us anew in Christ Jesus so we can do good things he had, I mean, he planned for us long ago. And what I love about this is what we're walking in we are Christ's masterpiece. And, and I'm not sure if you know what a masterpiece is, if you know a little bit about art and creation, how um, different painters, amen, they paint these, um, these paintings that um, are considered masterpiece. Some of them are considered, um, uh, don't, can't even put a price tag on it. Um, it's in the billions or millions of dollars because it's so priceless. And that's what God created us as, amen. He created us each and every one of us as masterpieces, amen. When we are recreated new, we are masterpieces, glory to God, because we are being recreated in his image, glory to God. Not our own image and not the DNA that we were born with, but now we have the DNA of our Savior, Jesus Christ, and we know our Jesus Christ is perfect, amen. He's He's the um, He's perfection, glory to God, and that same blood, that same um, uh, uh, presence of the Holy Spirit that dwelt in him, is now dwelling in each and every one of us, amen, and now we are considered masterpieces because we are recreated anew, amen, we no longer old, but now we are new, glory to God, and also, I love this, but he planned it out long, long time ago, before we even got here, amen, the plan was all along to, um, to bring us into perfection, to bring us into connection uh, with him that was lost because of the, the fall of Adam and Eve, all along, he wanted to bring us back to that state of perfection, and he did that, amen, by sending his son, Jesus Christ, to die for each and every one of us, and when we accept his son as our savior, amen, we become new, amen, we no longer old, and I'm not talking about age, I'm not talking about, um, you know, uh, uh, wrinkles, but I'm talking about we have created new in the presence of our savior, Jesus Christ, amen. Corporately in Jesus Christ, all men who believe, uh, both Jew and Gentile, make up one new body. And I love this. Uh, and I'm going to um, read all these scriptures. Um, but corporately in Jesus Christ, all men who believe, both Jew and Gentile, make up one new body. Amen. One. Amen. One new family. Amen. One new building. One new temple. One new fellowship. Amen. Um, when we be uh, when we become new in Jesus Christ, Amen. Both Jew and Gentile, we become part of God's family, Amen. And we all um, have a, a part in it, Amen. So I'm going to turn back to um, Ephesians uh, two, and I'm going to start reading at verse sixteen. I'm going to read all the way through uh, twenty-two, and in this we're going to find out how um, He makes us a, a new body, we part of a new family. Uh, we have a new building, amen, a new temple, and it's all geared upon one fellowship. So let's turn to Ephesians 2, and I'm going to be reading from 16 through 22. So, and once again, I'm reading from the, the uh, New Living Translation, starting at verse 16. It says, together as one body, Christ reconciled both groups to God by means of his death on the cross and our hostility toward each other was put to death. We brought this good news of peace to you Gentiles who were far away from him and peace to the Jews who were near. Now all of us can come to the Father through the same Holy Spirit because of what Christ has done for us. So now you Gentiles are no longer strangers and foreigners. You are citizens along with all of God's holy people. Glory to God. You are members of God's family. Together, we are his house, built on the foundation of the apostles and the prophets. And the cornerstone is Christ Jesus himself. We are carefully joined together in him, becoming a holy temple for the Lord. Through, the, 
through him, you Gentiles are also being made part of this dwelling where God lives by his spirit. Amen. Isn't that an awesome scripture? Yeah. Amen. It's just letting us know, glory to God, that we're part of one body. It's not um, one group of people over here, another group of people over there, but we all are, are part of God's family, God's kingdom. Amen. Part of God's body. And we know the story of all, of all the body parts and how all of them work together. Um, if one hurt, they all hurt. And how it references the body of Christ as well, that we should be functioning together on one accord, on, 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 on um, one agenda, um, working for the things of God. We one new family. Glory to God. We all brothers and sisters in the Lord. Amen. Um, none of us are alienated because of Jew or Gentile, uh, what race you are, but we all part of this family, according to the word. We one building. Amen. Um, and we one temple. Glory to God. And I love this. That we one new fellowship. Amen. Our fellowship is no longer part of the world, but now our fellowship is part of the kingdom of God. So we become new, amen, because of what Christ has done for us, amen. So when um, in verses 16 and 17, amen, um, Christ brings peace by creating a new man. So when we accept him once again, he promised us to be a new creation, that we will become new. And so when we accept his son, Jesus Christ, amen, we put our trust in him. All things have, are going to become new. We no longer, um, the old man is going to be passed away and we become new creations in the kingdom of God. Amen. And we are joined together. Amen. There is no, once again, there's no black, there's no white, there's no purple, green, yellow. Amen. There's no short, tall, amen, big or small. Amen. But we all are one family, whether Jews or Gentiles. Amen. There's no um, schisms or isms and there's no separation. We all part of the same family of God. Amen. So, uh, before we go into the next point on reconciliation, do we have any comments or thoughts on the first part of Christ brings peace by creating a new man? I, uh, I, I like the idea that I have been regenerated. <laughs> yes, yes. I, I like that. And also the fact that uh, it says, and we have a new temple. Uh, I'm now the temple of the Holy Spirit, you know, yes. our bodies yes. are the temple of the Holy Spirit, that the Holy Spirit indwells us. And that alone just gives you joy, you know. Yes, it does. Uh, thank God that, you know, we've been regenerated. <laughs> yes. Oh, Lord. Yes. <laughs> yes. yes. The old man will try to rise up in there. <laughs> yes, he will try that. Some people don't think that you have to deal with, but nevertheless, mm -hmm. you know, Yes, thank God for yes. regeneration. Yes, yes, and Pastor. The temple of the Holy Spirit. I thank God for that. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Pastor. And that is true. You know, we're fighting each and every day to hold that old nature under subjection, uh, but it can come up so easily yeah. in a discussion, or you know, um, the wife look at you wrong, or you look at the wife wrong, and and before you know it, you know, it's, it's gone. It could happen in the the the, the workplace, wherever you may go. The enemy is always at work. And even in church, amen, oh, yeah. the enemy wants always. to cause division. <laughs> he wants to cause confusion, amen, the clicks and all the different things he wants mm. to bring about. But God wants us to work in unity. And when we become yes. new creations, the old nature has passed away. So now we're about togetherness, amen. We're about family. We're about community. We're about letting the Holy Spirit reside, in, as Pastor said, in this temple and letting him have his way with our lives, amen, to bring glory, not to ourselves, but to bring glory to his name, to his, uh, to, to our Father in heaven. Amen. Do we have any other thoughts before we move on to uh, point four, reconciliation? Amen. Uh, so now we're going to move on the two verses that I read earlier, verses 16 and 17, are referencing reconciliation. Um, and this is point four on your, your packet down. Um, once again, the, um, it's called the life of the Christian believer. We are on point D. And now we can move on to uh, point four, reconciliation under D, uh, Jesus Christ and the cross. Um, Christ brings uh, us reconciliation. The word reconcile there means to change, to change thoroughly, glory to God, to exchange, to change from enmity to friendship, glory to God, to bring together, to restore. 
glory. I want to read that once, once more. That word reconcile there means to change, means to change thoroughly, not just change, but I love this change thoroughly. To exchange, to change from enmity to friendship, to bring together, to restore. The idea is that two persons who should have been together all along are brought together. Two persons who had something between them are restored and reunited. Glory to God. Amen. And there's five points that we want to note about reconciliation. Uh, the first point is this. Uh, the thing that broke the relationship between God and man was sin. Uh, many of us on the um, call and those who are viewing this may know this. We know that because of the fall of Adam and Eve, sin entered the world. And that's the relationship that we had with our father, God. And God sent his son to reconcile us back to himself uh, through his son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Uh, so point one, uh, we know that the relationship, once again, was broken because of sin. Men are said to be enemies of God. Um, if you can turn with me to Romans 5, and I'm going to read verses uh, 6 through 10. Uh, Romans 5. If I can get there. Romans 5. And I'm starting at verse 6 through 10. And once again, um, I, I really love how the New Living Translation reads, and that's why I keep reading it on tonight. So I figure instead of changing it, I just leave it there. We'll change it next time. Uh, Romans 5, verses 6 through 10 says this, when we were utterly helpless, Christ mm -hmm. came at just the right time and died for us sinners. Isn't that awesome? Yes. That. When yeah. When we were utterly helpless, helpless, Christ came at just the right time and died for us sinners. Now, most people would not be willing to die for an upright person, uh, though someone might perhaps be willing to die for a person who is especially good. But God showed his great love for us by sending Christ to die for us while we were still sinners. Glory to God. That's love right there. When sending your son to die for us while we were still sinners. Verse 9. And since we have been made right in God's sight by the blood of Christ, he will certainly save us from God's condemnation. For since our friendship with God was restored by the death of his son, while we were still his enemies, we will certainly be saved through the life of his son. Glory to God. The life of his son. Glory to God. Um, I just love that. Amen. Once again, that we were once enemies of God. And because of Christ uh, um, dying for us, amen, he um, um, made a way for us to be friends again with that God, the reconnecting back to God. I know myself, I always say that you know, it's so awesome to have a savior, amen, that came to this world to redeem us back to our father, God, amen, to, to, to make that reconnection that we once had that was severed because of sin, amen. Now, because of Jesus Christ, that connection is made again. Um, the lifeline that God always had in place for us all along has been reestablished. And when we become new, amen, it's almost like a um, conduit of love, of peace, joy, happiness, all that is going back to us because we have been made new and because of uh, the fall of Adam and Eve and because of the sending of God's son, Jesus, we are now reconnected with our Savior, um, with our God, through his son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Uh, the enemies are, I'm sorry, the enemies of God are the sinners and ungodly of this world. Uh, this simply means that every man is an enemy of God, for every man is a sinner. Um, and ungodly. This may seem unkind and harsh, but it is exactly what scripture is saying. The fact is clearly seen by thinking about the matter for a moment. The sinner cannot be said to be a friend of God. He's an uh, act act agnostic. Wow. Uh, act act agnostic. Man, I said this thing 500 times this afternoon, man, I get stuck. For God, opposing what God stands for. Uh, the sinner is rebelling against God, the sinner is rejecting God, cursing God, ignoring God, disobeying God, fighting against God, denying God, and refusing to live for God. When any of us sin, we work against God and promote evil by, by word and example. Amen. When any of us sin, 
We work against God and promote evil by word and example. Amen. Uh, point uh, thought under um, uh, uh, point uh, uh, four here. Uh, when the sinner lives for himself, he becomes an enemy of God. Why? Because God does not live for himself. God gave himself up in the most supreme way possible. He gave his only son to die for us. Two, when a sinner lives for the world and worldly things, he becomes an enemy of God. Why? Because he chooses the temporal things which passes away over God. Man chooses temporal things when God has provided eternal life for him through the death of his son. Glory to God. The point is this. Uh, this is the point of God's great love of, or reconciliation. He did not reconcile and save us when we were righteous and good. He reconciled and saved us when we were enemies, ignoring and rejecting him. As stated above, it is because we are sinners and enemies that we needed to be reconciled to God. Glory to God. And we're going to talk about this going forward. I don't want to get too far ahead of myself. And this helps me understand, once again, the whole uh, uh, theme that some people use, that if I do good, if I treat people respectfully, if I treat people lovingly, amen, that I'm going to make it into heaven, that God is going to receive me. But we still have to acknowledge that we are sinners and accept Jesus Christ as our personal Savior, amen. No matter how much good you do, um, I was in a situation the other day, and this particular person was going throughout this, this place where I was at talking about what they were doing at the Ronald McDonald house and this and this and that, and that, and that, amen. And, and in my mind, um, the Lord gives you discernment. And I was like, well, it ain't about doing this, amen. Um, is, are you doing this for show, for your business, for your company? Or are you doing it for the love of those people you are helping? Amen. Are you, have you accepted Jesus Christ? So no matter how much good you do, we're still sinners and we still need um, God's son, Jesus Christ as our savior, amen. So any thoughts before we uh, move on to point two? Amen. Uh, point two, uh, the way uh, men are reconciled to God is by the death of his son, Jesus Christ. Very simply stated, when a man believes that Jesus Christ died for him, God accepts the death of Jesus Christ for the death of the man. God accepts the sin borne by Christ as the sins committed by the man. God accepts the condemnation borne by Christ as the condemnation due to the man. Therefore, the man is freed from his sins and punishment due, uh, due his sins. Christ bore both the sins and the punishment for the man. The man who truly believes that God loves, loves that much enough to give his only begotten son becomes acceptable acceptable to God, reconciled forever and ever. Amen. So we see here, amen, that 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 uh, God accepts, amen, um, how uh, Jesus' death, amen, for the death of the man, amen. God accepts the sins borne by Christ, amen, as the sins com committed by the man. And God accepts the condemnation borne by Christ as the condemnation due to the man. But when we accept Jesus Christ, amen, um, that what Jesus Christ did for us, amen, it reconciles us back to God and God takes what should be, should be our punishment and our um, detriment. He places it on Jesus Christ and, he's ex and he accepts us as new creations because we have accepted his son, Jesus Christ. Amen. The man who truly believes that God loves that much enough to give his only begotten son once again becomes acceptable to God Amen. Acceptable to God, reconciled forever. Point three, God is the one who reconciles, not men. Men do not reconcile themselves to God. Uh, they cannot do enough work. They, I, like I said, I got ahead of myself. They cannot do uh, enough work or enough good to become acceptable to God. Mm -hmm. Reconciliation is entirely the act of God. God is the one who reaches out to men and reconciles them unto himself. Men receive the reconciliation of God. Amen. We receive the reconciliation of God. 
once again, we cannot do enough work and we cannot do enough good to become acceptable to God. Amen. It is entirely an act of God reconciling us back to himself through his son, Jesus Christ. Point four. Uh, all men can be reconciled uh, uh, to one another and be brought together if they look up to God through the Lord Jesus Christ. Men who, men who look up to Jesus Christ for reconciliation and peace with God are linked arm in arm under the same Lord. Amen. Amen. And uh, we read Ephesians 2, verses 4, uh, 2 through 22. Um, but I definitely want to read um, a couple of these scriptures. Uh, could someone find for me John 14, 27? Uh, could someone find 1 John 1, 3 and 4? And I will find 1 John 2, 1 and 2. And we're, what we're talking about here is we've been reconciled uh, one to another. Amen. We can be brought together if they look uh, if they look up to God through the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Uh, we can be linked arm in arm. Amen. Did someone have uh, John 14, 27? Peace I leave with you. My peace I give unto you. Not as the world giveth, give I unto you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. Amen. And that's the peace of God that he's leaving with us and he has left for us. And that's why we can work together. And that's why we can have peace amongst each other because of what Christ left us. Um, first John 1, 3 and 4. I have that one. First John 1, 3 and 4. That which we have seen and heard declare we unto you that ye also may have fellowship with us. And truly, our fellowship is with the Father and with his Son, Jesus Christ. And these things write we unto you, that your joy may be full. Oh, Amen. Yes. Amen. Amen. See how the, God, the word of God is so, it just brings everything home. Amen. Uh, what, the, what we're trying to study about the book of Ephesians here. And this one part about us loving and having peace and able to come on in arm. Uh, 1 John 2, uh, 1 and 2 says, My dear children, I'm writing this to you so that ye will not sin. But if anyone does sin, we have an advocate who pleads our case before the Father. He is Jesus Christ, the one who is truly righteous. He himself is the sacrifice that atones for our sins, and not only our sins, but the sins of the world. Amen. Yeah. And isn't that awesome that he just didn't... Yeah. Um, reconcile or die for our sins, but he died for the sins of the entire world. Amen. That's all of creation. And those babies that are yet to be born, uh, uh, those uh, children, he died for them as well. Amen. He died for all um, mankind as they, um, you know, uh, as pastor said on Sunday, we've been told and said that the time is running short and, and God is coming back soon. We don't know the time or the hour. Amen. But he is coming back. But if he does not come back, those children that are born and grow up, amen, they are part of the kingdom of God, too. They have an opportunity to ask for salvation as well. So God knows all. And he just didn't die for us, but he died for the entire world and even those yet to be born. Amen. Amen. So point five, it reads, uh, men learn about reconciliation by, by the preaching of Jesus Christ. Christ was the first to preach the message. His followers are to follow in his trail. For there is no other way men can ever know that they can be reconciled to God apart from preaching. Um, can I have a reader for those scriptures there? And all things are of God, who hath reconciled us to himself by Christ Jesus and hath given us the ministry of reconciliation. 2 Corinthians 5 and 18, 2 Corinthians 5, 19 through 21. His grace wherein he hath made us accepted in the beloved, Ephesians 1 and 6, and that he might reconcile both unto God 
in one body by the cross, having slain the enemy of the enmity thereby. Ephesians 2.16. And having made peace through the blood of his cross by him to reconcile all things unto himself by him, I say, whether they be things in earth or things in heaven. Colossians 1 and 20. Wherefore in all things it behooved him to be made like unto his brethren, that he might be a merciful and faithful high priest in things pertaining to God, to make reconciliation for the sins of the people. Hebrew, Hebrews 2.17. We love him because he first loved us. 1 John 4.19. Amen. Thank you, Pastor. Mm -hmm. So we see here uh, point four tonight. Uh, we studied about reconciliation. Uh, the whole point of, of the meeting was this on tonight. Um, God reconciled us through his son, Jesus Christ. Um, he reconciled us back to himself. Um, once again, that word reconcile means to change, to change thoroughly. And I love that thoroughly because God just didn't um, die halfway for us or redeem us for some of our sins, amen, but he redeemed us from them all, amen, he died, amen, so he, amen, he changes us thoroughly, amen, If we let the Holy Spirit wash us, we can have a new tongue, we can have a new attitude, we can have a new dress, amen, we can have a new way of living, if we just let the Holy Spirit wash us thoroughly, he can do it, and that's what that reconciliation does for us, it makes us new, amen, um, I'm not sure about you all, but uh, I don't talk the same. Uh, I don't dress the same. I don't act the same. I don't go to the same places no more. And I'm sure many of you all can say the same thing because as God is um, renewing us and making us new, those old things pass away. Amen. Uh, um, I mean, many of us, we just don't do the things that we used to do. And I think that is because we are being made anew and God is changing us thoroughly. Amen. Um, he's exchanging our old life for his new life. Amen. He's changing out um, being an enemy of, of him to being a friend of him. Glory yeah. to God. Um, it also, amen, is um, bringing us together as a um, group of people, both Jew and Gentiles, and it also is restoring each and every one of us. Amen. So mm -hmm. I love this uh, part about reconciliation because that's what God has done. He has reconciled us to himself through his son, Jesus Christ. Any thoughts before we uh, go into uh, part five on tonight? When you were reading um, the verses about the fact that when we were utterly helpless, you read to verse 10 through to verse 10, but verse 11 was good too, but you kind of alluded to it just now. So now we can rejoice in our wonderful new relationship with God. Yes. Because our Lord Jesus Christ has made us friends of God. Yes. You yes. Just and I remember that, that verse too. Yes. That was awesome verse. Yeah. You, you yes. Just mentioned it, but that was good. Yes. I'm and I, I love this. <laughs> Yes. I am a friend of God. Yes, that's, that's, that's oh, exactly what I was getting ready to say. That song, I never forget when Jonathan Butler came out with that many, many years ago. That that was on my playlist. Um, mm -hmm. We are friends of God now. And now that we're friends of God, um, now we have access, amen, to God. Yes. Um, and that's a beautiful thing, having being able to access God. Um, point five says, um, and access, Christ brings us access to God. The word access there means to bring to, what we got, to bring to, to move to, to introduce, and to present. Uh, the thought is that of being in a royal court and being pre presented and introduced to the King of Kings, Jesus Christ. I'm sorry, and being introduced to the King of Kings. Jesus Christ is the one who throws open the door into God's presence. Glory to God. Jesus Christ is the one that throws open the door into God's presence. He is the one who presents us to God, the sovereign majesty of the universe. Note that it is the Holy Spirit, glory, who escorts us into God's presence. 
It is the Holy Spirit, excuse me, who escorts us into God's presence. The idea is that a um, that of daily access, hour by hour, moment by moment, the Holy Spirit keeps us in the presence of God. Point one here. The Holy Spirit is a divine nature of God within us that gives us permanent access into God's presence. Um, and I'm going to uh, read uh, Romans 8, uh, 11 through 14 at this point. Romans 8, 11 through 14. And Romans 8 and 11 through 14 reads, uh, The Spirit of God who raised Jesus from the dead lives in you. And just as God raised Christ Jesus from the dead, he will give life to your mortal bodies by the same spirit living within you. Glory to God. Once again, God raised Christ Jesus from the dead. He will give life to your mortal bodies by the same spirit living within you. Therefore, dear brothers and sisters, you have no obligation to do what your sinful nature urges you to do. For if you live by its dictates, you will die. But if through the power of the spirit you put to, put, to, put to death the deeds of your sinful nature, you will live. For all who are led by the spirit of God, glory to God, are the children of God, glory to God. And I'm going to just read this last one. So you have not received a spirit that makes you fearful slaves. Instead, you receive God's spirit when he adopted you as his own children. Now we call him Abba, Father. Glory to God. But his spirit joins with our spirit to affirm that we are, are God's children. Glory to God. Isn't that awesome? Yeah. Amen. The Holy Spirit, amen, is, is letting us know that we can now call God Father. Uh, we've been escorted into his presence. Amen. The Holy Spirit is the one who steers us up. Amen. And moves us into his presence. Amen. Um, that was point two. I'm sorry. Uh, the first point was the Holy Spirit is a divine nature of God within us that gives us permanent access into God's presence. Point two, the Holy Spirit is the one who works in us and steers us to move more and more into God's presence. The Holy Spirit is the constant companion with us, teaching us to live in God's presence. And lastly, the Holy Spirit is the one within us who bears witness that we are the children of God and should approach God continually. Glory to God. Isn't that awesome that we get to approach God? Yeah. Uh, and I love how the writer writes here that um, Jesus Christ has opened the doors for us to enter into the presence of God. And the Holy Spirit is what ushers us and puts us into the presence of God. So we have access into God um, through the presence of the Holy Spirit, uh, all because of what Jesus Christ did for us on the cross. And um, because of that, amen, he opened the door for us to have access into the kingdom of heaven. Amen. Um, uh, that will bring us to the close for the lesson on tonight. Um, that last part, uh, access is so, once again, um, and it's so vital. And we have studied about the Holy Spirit um, here at Restoration quite a bit. So many of us know, amen, um, that's how important the Holy Spirit is. Uh, whether you speak in tongues or whether you do not, you need the presence of the Holy Spirit in you, active, moving, and, 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 and bringing you to life in the kingdom of God. And that's what I think that that Holy Spirit does. It's like, well, it's not like it is dunamis power because we read how the same power that raised Jesus Christ is that same spirit that now lives within each one of us. So we are dunamis power walking people. Thank you, Lord. Dunamis power walking people because of the Holy Spirit that resides within us. Amen. Uh, so before we go into our announcements, um, and before I uh, turn it over to Pastor, um, anyone have any remarks um, of the lesson on tonight? I uh, thank all of you all for joining. Um, we just open up the floor before we um, uh, give our pastor the remark, final remarks. Amen. Oh, yes. <laughs> Always fighting with the unmute. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I thank God for... Um, the lesson on tonight, um, I had wrote a note about 
the part God, uh, Christ brings us access to God. And just thinking about how sad it is for those that may don't have access to God, like Christ has made a way that we can come back and forth and, and talk with God and walk with God and be friends with God. But for those that don't have that opportunity or don't know, they're missing out on so much. They're missing out on a life that could be so much fulfilled with that relationship with Christ versus being emptied and um, going down the wrong path. Amen. Yeah. So, um, and uh, there was a conversation that I had earlier where, um, oh my goodness. I don't know how to put it into words and I don't wanna divulge any confidences. The key is Jesus Christ, amen, yes. and the Holy Spirit, and that we have access to God through that, so um, through them. So I just thank God for allowing us to have that access, and I pray that the Lord would ever the more just continue to reveal himself to people and mm -hmm. let that Holy Spirit just burn with that curiosity till they find the truth, which yeah, is Jesus amen. Christ. Amen. Very good point there, Sister Ricky. Thank you. Um, anyone else? Because that's that's so important that uh, that you brought that out. That so many people could be living better. Um, just as um, I, I'm not sure if this is Ophi or uh, Sister Joy, um, but they uh, put two con uh, comments up. One was we are free. Yes. And, uh, the other one was no longer enemies of God. Mm -hmm. Therefore, we approach Him with boldness and confidence. Mm -hmm. uh, there is no more fear in life or death. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Yes. I'm Ophi. Uh, Ophi. Okay. <laughs> God bless you, Mr. Ophi. <laughs> Amen. So any other thoughts uh, before I turn it over to Pastor and then we go over announcements? Okay, I'm going to place you in the hands of our pastor at this time. Well, just to piggyback on Sister Ricky's uh, comment, you know, about the fact that we have access because the veil has been rented from top yes. to bottom that has given us the access to enter in to the most holy of holies where only the high priest could enter. Now we have access, you know, to enter in because of the fact that that veil was rented from yes. top to bottom. And I thank God for having that access. Can you imagine having money in the bank and you don't know your pen number and you can't <laughs> get into it and, and you just yes. have a loss? But thank God, whenever we need help, we can, you know, go to the throne of God and we have access to his presence. And yes. Yes. So I thank yes. God for that. Thank God for the lesson. Okay, thank you. Thank and for you, all Pastor. the women tonight. Yes. <laughs> all yes. the women. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> we might as well give them another hand clap on tonight. Uh, <laughs> like I started off with uh, giving them hand claps. I know. And, uh, and we started off with the story of Esther and how yeah, such yeah. a time as this, she was in the kingdom. Amen. She was in the presence of the king to be able to save her people. Yes. Amen. Amen. So we just thank God for all you women, um, for the mothers, the grandmothers, amen, the aunts, amen, the sisters that are doing great things for the kingdom, great, great things for your families. Great things for your churches. We thank God for you because we know uh, just the one thing, uh, giving birth is not an easy thing. And we as men, we would never experience that. But to know that you're able to recreate, amen, and, and a, a new life comes through you is such an um, awesome accomplishment. And then you nurture um, in a, such a way that um, I know how it is with me and I know how it is with mom. The love of a mother for a son yes. is, is, is unbreakable, amen. You just love your mothers because of the love they pour back into you. Uh, I don't think a man could do it. And uh, um, uh, it's, it's, a, um, it's, it's funny and not funny. Uh, the father has um, a good connection with his kids, but the mother has, I don't know what it is, um, uh, overextended connection uh, because it's just that way because the mothers are special. Women are special, and we love all of you women, and we thank God for all of you on tonight. Amen. Um, before we uh, close, I just uh, I bring up the um, the announcements for this week. Bring it up here.
Okay, so um, <clears throat> this week, um, the announcements are before you. Uh, Time of Restoration radio broadcast uh, is on Thursdays, 10 a.m. and 8 p.m. on WTMRradio.com, 800 a.m. on the radio dial, um, also on our rcfchurch.org website, and both our Google and Apple podcasts as well. Pastor is in a new series on contentment, um, and uh, last week's message um, was awesome. And it was talking about um, Paul, how he learned to be content in every stage where he where he was a base to where he didn't have or uh, he had it going on. Whatever state he found himself to be content. Amen. And um, she's continuing that series tomorrow. Part two. Um, please check it out once again, Thursdays tomorrow at 10 a.m. or 8 p.m. And once again, WTMRradio.com, RCFchurch.org. Google Podcasts, Apple Podcasts, just type in Restoration Christian Fellowship Church and our podcast will come up. Uh, series, once again, Contentment, excuse me, part two. Also this Saturday morning at 9 a.m. is the Integrated Men's uh, Breakfast Fellowship. We're meeting at the church this Saturday at 9 a.m. Second Saturday of each month, we come together as uh, men of all races. Uh, we did have, um, was able to do a breakfast in January. Um, where uh, we fellowship with Food Spirit Ministry, um, but we have not been able to really get breakfast each and every month, but just coming together for fellowship has been a blessing. Um, that's something that Overseer really wanted. Whenever we met in the church, it would be two men or three men, um, but lately, um, each and every service from since COVID, uh, we've been averaging more than five to 10 men each and every Saturday that we have the Men's Integrated Breakfast Fellowship. So we look forward to seeing the men, seeing, seeing the men in the house this Saturday, 9 a.m. Um, also on March 17th, uh, I believe the Holy Spirit dropped something in my heart to do for the young people. Uh, we're gonna have a real life talk where we're gonna ask the young people to come, ages 18 and up. And we're gonna have a discussion where we're gonna take off, um, as they say, take off the guardrails um, and we're gonna open the floor up to, to serious questions that are troubling our young people. And we pray through the Holy Spirit, he will give us the answers to give them to continue on um, uh, this road traveling with Jesus Christ. Amen. So those are the announcements um, that are scheduled for next week and the following week. Uh, please take note and we look forward to seeing each and every one of you all at one of those events. Um, at this time, um, I have a uh, 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 volunteer to close this out in prayer on tonight. Um, no volunteers. Um, Pastor, do you mind closing us out tonight? <laughs> I'm sorry to put you. <laughs> Everybody got their mute button stuck tonight. <laughs> Father God, in the name of Jesus, we just thank you, O God, for this time of fellowship, God. Lord, we thank you, O God, for your word. We thank you for the fact that we've been reconciled back to you. Lord, we're just praying for those tonight, O God, that you would, you know, help people's minds to be changed. Yes. That, well, yeah. you know, have a mind to want to serve you. Lord, the, the people are hopeless tonight, but God, thou yes, yes. in you. Lord, we are praying, oh God, for the unsaved God. We are just asking, oh God, that you would help us to seize every moment that we have to share the gospel of Jesus Christ. God, we are praying that you would open up blinded eyes and deaf ears, God. We are praying, oh God, for each family that's represented here. Lord, you know every heart's desires, every heart's mm. cry, every desire, God. We thank you for moving by your divine yes, intervention. Yes, yes. Oh, God, you, you've never failed us yet. Hallelujah. Yes. Hallelujah. This far, and you've never failed us yet. And God, yes. we give you praise. We give you glory and honor for your faithfulness unto us, oh God. Lord, we thank you, oh God, for your master plan of redemption. Oh God, because you love the world so much. While we were helpless and we were sinners christ died for us oh god and we don't take that for granted in the name of jesus god we love you because you first loved us not that we loved you so much but god you loved us hallelujah and lord we can't even compare our love to your love for us so Lord, we're asking oh god that you will continually to touch minds change hearts and desires and lord be with us oh god until we meet again lord and God, just bless uh, uh, Pastor Kenny, his family, his wife, his children, God, and just continue to use them, oh God, to expand the kingdom of God. 
And we would be so careful to give your name the praise, the glory, the honor belongs to you always. In yes. Jesus' name we pray. And let God's people say amen. Amen. And amen. I think we're the amen. only Amen. Unmute. Oh. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. 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 Glory to God. Hallelujah. 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 Lord, and greater to be. Thank you, Lord. Yes. Yes. I was saying, Hallelujah. When I was in the shower uh, uh, earlier today, I heard the Lord just said, I, I, I was praying in tongues. And then he said, you know, I'm knocking, you know, at the door mm -hmm. of your heart. You just come in, I'll sup with you and you'll sup with me. And, and he's knocking at our hearts. He's knocking yes, he at our hearts. But us to just open up and let him mm -hmm. sup with us. And likewise, we'll sup with him. So yes. Thank God for that. <laughs> yes. Thank you, Pastor. You're welcome. All right. Um, if there is nothing else on tonight, uh, please be blessed and have a beautiful night. And um, be blessed and take care and have a great night rest. And um, wake up, as Pastor said, giving God glory and, and wanting to be in his presence. Glory yeah. to God. Amen. Be blessed. Amen. Be blessed, everyone. Have a good night. Be blessed. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night.